Dear students, welcome to the fifth episode of the podcast brought to you by the Students' Union Studio. I'm Arpad, and my guest today is Julian. He's a third-year medical student. Could you give us, give our listeners, a brief introduction about yourself? Well, uh, thank you, Arpad, for being here. And um, yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a third-year medical student, and um, I'm, uh, as you can guess, a little bit older than uh, most of uh, you guys listening to this uh, podcast. I'm 32 years old, which meant that I uh, s- spent uh, about 10 years more than you on this planet. Uh, and uh, this gave me the chance to experience a lot of different things. So I actually uh, studied uh, economics and management for five years. And I did the conservatoire in Milan um, for opera singing. And then for about four or five years before I started to study uh, medicine, I, I was actually active as a professional uh, opera singer and um, doing about 180, 200 concerts a year uh, all over the world from South Korea, uh, in Mexico and Europe, Poland, Norway, Germany. And it was a great experience because I could... Um, sing in uh, big, big concert halls and also concert halls that are, for me, uh, very important, like the Berlin Philharmonic, which for me is the temple of music. And uh, so it's a great satisfaction for somebody who studies music to actually have a chance to to, to reach a little bit his, his dreams. It sounds like a pretty exciting life, tra- traveling all around and yeah. singing. So... What made you decide to kind of change paths and start studying medicine? Well, the truth is, I, it was never... Um, a, a, oh, I have to confess that I wanted to study medicine since I'm like 18. Uh, and um, because of the uh, circumstances, which can be various, you know, each, it, 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 it was very difficult for me to actually start studying medicine already at the age of 19, 20. And um, part of it is um, surely kind of a familiar background. Part of it was the idea that I won't be able to combine my passion for music with an intense study like medicine. And obviously part of it was also the political decisions uh, that, that governments have taken in the past 15 years about how uh, admissions work in medicine. So it was uh, to the contrary than maybe the generation of my parents where one could simply study medicine by uh, signing up. Uh, in my, I was already in that generation where admissions were more difficult. And um, so it just didn't work out. And it... I have to confess so that like every day of my life since I'm 18 and then even during my studies of uh, economics and management and my music, even though it was a very fulfilling life, every morning I would wake up with this voice in the back saying, next life you should become a doctor. Ah, you fucked it up. You should become a doctor. Uh, and then uh, something happened in my life. I remember exactly. It was um, f- five days after the 28th of November 2018, uh, which is the third or f- second or third of December. And I was uh, sitting in a hotel room in Korea in the district of Gangam, in a five-star hotel. I just had a big concert there, um, 1,500 people or so. And um, I was sitting in my chair in this hotel room at 2 o'clock in the morning with a huge jet lag and, and um, after my concert, and it was a, a big aha moment for my life. Um, my, my stepfather just uh, passed away, a few days earlier, so I was 
obviously emotional, a little bit tormented. I had to do these concerts and I was sitting there and the whole world seemed to implode on me. And I said, how can this be? I'm, I'm successful as a, as a singer. How many singers have the chance to get flown into Korea and do a concert for 1,500 people and live in a five-star hotel? Uh, not so many and get paid a lot. Uh, so, and I still felt unhappy. And then I was realizing that my, my, I was saying, okay, if my job doesn't make me really happy, so even though I'm successful, so maybe then my family should make me happy, right? Everything outside of them. And with the death of my stepfather, in, the, in a way, I kind of realized, well, my family, my parents, and so, you know, one day they will be gone. So I got to build my own family. And at the time I had a, a girlfriend uh, where I could feel already that it's probably not the right person. And, and so, so things were, were not so concrete there. So I was really floating in this ocean of life, in this implosion and uh, looking for something to grab onto, and something that, that truly medicine. defines uh, me, will define me, and it will be an anchor for me. And it was not even a uh, millisecond of a thought that was absolutely clear that it is medicine. And I, and I, and I picked up the phone the next morning, and I called uh, my mother, and I said, uh, uh, I'm going to study medicine with or without you guys. And that's what I did. It still took two years till I get into Semmelweis, but uh, I'm very happy and very grateful to be here. That's a wonderful story. And it's almost like picturesque, like the sudden revelation of pursuing a field that would truly make you happy. Yeah. These things happen. And you know, I, I, there is magic in life, you know? And I think we as doctors we got to be a little bit open to that because yes we are in a, in a world where and in a in a active in a professional field where you have to be scientific you have to be concrete you have to base your decisions uh, on, on on actual data on previous knowledge uh, on studies but part of being truly scientific uh, part of being truly professional is also to be open to everything because only the open eye can really see. And if you accept to be open, it means that you might also encounter magic here or there or intuition. And, and this is something that has been proven in, in, in every field from medicine to economics. And I think uh, it is it is important. When I hear a, a, a six-year student say that uh, psychiatry is not a real science, uh, I wonder what type of doctors uh, is this next generation going to be, you know. Um, so I think we have a big responsibility to always study more, to be open. We might not agree to, like, for example, other medical systems like Chinese medicine or Indian uh, medicine, uh, we might find they're not uh, suitable or they're not scientific enough. But if we truly want to be scientists and uh, real professionals, we have to at least know about them and we have to study about them and we have to get uh, uh, knowledgeable in all directions. And uh, that's... Um, what I really recommend to everybody. It's interesting that uh, the study of incredible depth that it requires to become a doctor, mm -hmm. um, studying all this material across a very wide range of subjects can actually sometimes, you know, close down people's fields of view. As you've mentioned, like some doctors are pretty stalwart in their ways and they don't have as much of an open mind despite the fact that their studies are so broad and expansive. So I feel like what you're saying has a lot of merit to it. And I think it's something that many people could, you know, take some uh, like uh, use of, uh, not just in medicine, but in general. It's absolutely true because I tell you a secret. Happiness lies there, you know. 
uh, to to I I believe that uh, true happiness or a little bit call it serenity uh, or or even health lies in this um, a little bit more open view uh, because if people have very rigid ideas about their field I mean everybody needs structure and rigid ideas but as uh, as as uh, as Gandhi said, you know, you learn the law to know how to break it. No? There is this other dimension. You have to learn how to break it. And and not only in the profession, but if you have this attitude generally in life, when you when you are open to to seeing the world like that in relationships or in the relationship with yourself, uh, I believe you have a chance of actually uh, discovering a sort of a serenity, a calmness, and uh, maybe that is the origin of happiness. And, you know, we are in the business of happiness because um, ultimately, at least I see the, the medical profession as being uh, way more important than just an uh, uh, understander of uh, the physical body and an improver of the mechanical fields that go around. But uh, we are, in a way... Uh, the, the 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 one person uh, the figure that people turn to 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 f- find a connection between their lives their body uh, their soul their happiness and uh, we encounter people when they are in crisis and you know every health crisis is w- more or less also an emotional crisis or a crisis generally about uh, their life and I think we have to we have the responsibility to at least uh, be a person that people can talk to about these things it's not important there are no truths out there that are absolutely uh, absolute you know but we have to realize that being a doctor means also being there and a person of contact and a person of exchange also for a little bit bigger questions because that is human and we are human people it's the most human profession that you can have i think the uh, next generation of doctors being trained at some advice and i think all around the world are being exposed to teaching that is a bit more not focused entirely but pays a bit more attention to this emotional aspect you've mentioned I think there's a change coming uh, in medicine, um, and I think the future looks bright. I hope so. I hope so. Well, if you're a part of it, it'll definitely you'll make your own change. You know, yeah. you might just be one future doctor, but little things add up to great effects. And who knows? Maybe all our listeners out there listening take a little bit of uh, use of this, and maybe you're making a much bigger impact than you yeah. would by yourself. Look, uh, we all uh, are incredible, um, unique people. We all uh, have an extreme uh, creativity uh, in uh, in us. And, you know, with time, you need to use that creativity as a source of energy. You know, when, when you face hard times, exam periods, uh, when you face uh, crises, maybe you know, a relative dies. When you're going to face hard times in your profession, you got to uh, have, maybe I call it, maybe a sort of a source of energy, something that gives you a light. And and I believe that if we dig each and every body of us in, in their own um, soul and in who they are and really are proud of their their own uh, achievements and uh, you know or talents or not talents anyway their in their own individuality i believe that is that is a great source to confront then the hard times you know there is no need uh, to despair all right thank you uh steering onwards to topics that are more closely intertwined with the university itself so as an international student, you definitely have some insight on 
what could be done to help further integrate international students or just improve their university life here at Semmelweis? Mm-hmm. Well, I think it all, I mean, the, the student organizations, uh, the, the HERC, the ISA, the, the SVS, uh, I think they're doing all a wonderful, great job. And, and I think uh, everybody, every student knows that these organizations are out there. And, uh, but independent of that, I, I really think uh, the, the most powerful uh, instrument we have to, to improve uh, our uh, quality of studying is uh, by just uh, speaking and being open and engaging. And, and each and every one of us uh, has to show the, call it maybe, a little bit boldness or uh, courage mm-hmm. to 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 approach uh, somebody and ask him. You know, you're at the cafeteria and waiting in line for coffee, and you don't know the person. Just say, "Hey, I'm Julian. What's your name? I'm studying medicine. Oh, cool. You're studying in third year. Oh, that's hard. Oh, well, well. you know, and you create a connection. And and it, this is the most powerful instrument, and it's the most uh, uh, road, uh, rude, uh, um, but but also the one that gives us the most satisfaction because when you truly speak to a person, uh, you you grow. So I think that is uh, the, the the real instrument that uh, we can uh, we can do to to further always improve uh, how things are. Such a simple thing, and in all it takes is one little step yes. of bravery. Thank you. Um, thank you for the interview. It's been great. Nice. Uh, big thank you goes out to our audience. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, make sure to drop us a follow on our social media. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.